Yay guys, my name is Priscilla Elias and today, as I promised you, I'm going to show you a photo comparison using both my Sony a7S III and the Canon 5D Mark IV. Woo, I'm excited about this one. I wanted to prepare this video ever since I got the Sony about three months ago. So let's do it. <laughs> If it is your first time watching my channel, you might be wondering why I'm comparing these two cameras since they're so different and the reason why is simply because up until a couple of months ago I only shot Canon. I used Canon for about three to four years and I recently bought a Sony A7S III mainly because I wanted more video quality and capabilities. When I decided to buy the A7S III I had a little bit of a doubt at the back of my head because the Canon 5D Mark IV has a 30 megapixel sensor while the Sony a7S III has a 12 megapixel sensor. Would I not lose quality in terms of photos, which was my core business? Would I need to keep using the Canon for photos and have the Sony mainly for videos? I made some research about it and even though at the time I did not find a picture comparison of the Sony a7S III against the Canon 5D Mark IV specifically, I found some videos comparing the a7S III to other cameras with more megapixels. And in the end, not even amazing photographers who have been working with high-end photo and video for years have been able to tell the difference between one and the other, even on the printed versions of the photos. But now that I finally decided to buy the A7S III, I had to get it off my head. So it's time to test both cameras and see which one shoots the best photos. It's important to mention that I use the 5D Mark IV with the Canon 16-35 to 2.8 and the a7S III with the Sony 16-35mm 2.8 GM lens for some of the photos and I use the 5D Mark IV with the 85mm 1.8 against the Sony A7S III with the Sigma 85mm 1.4. I kept the same aperture, ISO and shutter speed on both cameras for each of the photos you'll see. That way we will be able to compare the same settings and we won't end up distracted by difference that would be caused by different focal lengths, aperture or ISO. I also made sure to take some photos in natural daylight conditions, other photos in an ambient of low light and also some with a greater dynamic range where the background was really bright while the subject was in the shadow. That way we can also see how both cameras perform in each situation. Said that, let's hit the streets! Okay, we're ready to go for a walk. Today I'm taking you to Sigtuna. lucky or what it is but every time I come here it rains and today it was like really sunny and there was no forecast for rain but apparently soon it's gonna rain so this is the edited version of the photo I took with the Canon 5D Mark IV and this is the edited version of the photo I took with the Sony a7S III here they are side by side Of course, the editing was not exactly the same for both cameras. I just edited them in a way they would look as much like each other as possible in terms of colors. And in terms of sharpening, that's where I found the first main difference between the Canon and the Sony. The Sony seems naturally sharper to me and this might not be so visible to you here because for my Canon photos, I naturally and normally already use some sharpening to enhance all of my images a bit 
And when editing the Sony photos, I decided not to sharpen my photos, since to me they were already sharp enough. I even added up a little bit of noise reduction to get a cleaner look with the Sony, but still, you probably can still note a little bit of extra grain with the Sony. And to me, that's okay, because I usually add some grain to my Canon photos in post anyway. I like that textured effect you get from it. But I definitely like the fact that Canon delivers me softer and cleaner images, because I can add grains and sharpness in post. For some types of photos, it is better to have a cleaner image. So let's go to the second photo. So this is the Canon photo for the second shot. And this is the Sony one, side by side. When looking at the photos side by side, I don't see much of a difference for this particular shot. I think they're very similar. I don't know if you're watching this video in a reliable monitor or on a big TV. I saw all of the images on all of my devices, my phone, my ASO 27 inches monitor and my Sony Bravia 55 inches TV. I zoomed all the photos in and out and truly there are some small differences regarding to the amount of grain, but nothing that hurts me really. I don't know, what do you think? For this third photo, I wanted to test the dynamic range for both cameras. So this is the original Canon image and this is the original Sony image. And after editing, this is what I got. Side by side, I underexposed the subject on purpose because I wanted to see how much I could cover from the shadows later in post and even though the light hit my face a little bit differently in each photo because it was a windy day and clouds were coming in and out you can still see that both cameras did a decent job in recovering the shadows the canon might even seem to win this one but i feel it's only because i had my face up when i took the canon portrait so there were more shadows to my eyes in the sony photo Still, I thought I'd be more surprised with the Sony and actually, for photos, they're both very good when it comes to recovering shadows from underexposed photos. Then I decided to hit spot number two to take some photos in low light. And this is the portrait I took with the Canon and the one with Sony. Both performed incredibly well in low light with very similar results. Again, I see a slight difference in terms of grain and sharpness, but that's only when I compare both photos side by side. And finally, I decided to take a shot with the 16 to 35 2.8 with both cameras, so I could see if the lens could play an important role in any of this with the Canon. the one with Sony. I was a little bit closer to the lens when I took the Canon photo and this might be the reason why I have the impression the Canon looks a bit better. The light is also softer with the Canon, which is very likely a result of different lights from the cars coming in and out and bouncing lights on the corridor. So I feel that even when switching lenses, the differences between one camera and the other seem to be the same I mentioned before. A big difference I noticed from one camera to the other was the straight out-of-camera color difference. I like Canon's colors better for sure, they look more natural to me. Sony just looks a bit too yellowish, greenish, I don't know. And even the sharpness, again, I like how Canon is naturally softer, so I can sharpen it up later in post. But, as you've seen on the photos here, nothing that makes a big difference in the end after editing. Maybe it's just that I'm used to editing Canon's photos and maybe that's why I like it better, I'm not sure. Now, a big difference I noticed when taking photos with both cameras, and this is something some of you Sony shooters might or might not be able to help me, is the focus when using the cell phone as the remote controller of my camera. It was so much harder for me to get the right focus with Sony. 
while Canon's app will let me touch over the area of the image where I want to set the focus for, Sony will only allow me to use eye autofocus. But for some reason it seems not to work that well when using the app as a remote controller. The solution for me was to look straight at the camera every time I wanted to take a photo and when the self-timer started I would then look away. It seemed to work better that way but it sucks because it ends up slowing me down a lot. While I could take 10 Canon photos with a great focus, I was able to take one or two Sony photos with a good focus. Does anyone know a solution for that? I really want to know if this is just me or if it's unfixable because if this is not solvable then it's definitely something that might be the reason why I will not change from Canon to Sony when it comes to photography. Important note here, the eye autofocus works amazingly well if you're not using the app as a remote controller, if you're not doing self-portraits, if you're shooting someone else, it's much easier for me to get the focus right with the Sony than with the Canon. But if you, like me, do your own self-portraits, it can be an issue, unless it is something solvable. So please let me know if you know anything. Now, back to the image comparison. I just printed out some photos in different sizes so we could see if there was any actual considerable difference in terms of image quality with the printed versions of them. And by the way, thank you so much Optimal Print for sending me these beautiful prints. I totally recommend Optimal Print if you're after a good printing service. They also offer beautiful framing, different types of material for your printing. You can create personalized photo albums, mugs, shirts, purses, and so much more. You can also find beautiful posters with different styles of art, fun sayings, or photos that will help you to decorate your house and make it look so much nicer. I love how they quickly deliver my prints and how it is always perfectly packaged small details that make the whole difference for anyone looking for high-end quality services. Best of all, for a great price. Access the link to Optimal Prints website down here in the description and get 50% off if you buy any prints using the code you will find below. Important to mention, they ship worldwide. Also cool to mention, if you print your photos on a regular basis, Optimal Print now has a loyalty program called Optimal Print Plus where for only $29.90 a month, you can get free shipping on all orders for 12 months and access to other great benefits. I will leave a link for this new loyalty program in the description as well because it might be something interesting to some of you. So after analyzing and comparing both small 30 by 50 centimeters prints and big 70 by 100 centimeter prints, what I can tell you is when I look at the prints, I see exactly the same difference I see in my monitor and on my TV. The photos are definitely a bit different as Sony is naturally a bit grainier than the Canon but, as I also said before, I actually like the amount of grain I get from the Sony. It doesn't look to me as a drop of quality, even though if clean images is something that is really important to you, then the Canon might be the one to go with. If I consider the quality results for the photos, I'd say I could easily stick with Sony only because that would allow me to have more Sony lenses and it would make my life easier in terms of gear to carry around. But I'm not convinced with the Sony self-portraits yet. It seems so much easier and faster to shoot self-portraits with Canon and again, there might be something I don't know, so if you can help me, I will be really thankful. I hope I find a solution for that and if I do, I will come back to tell you soon. And I think that's kind of crazy because Sony is so amazing to find the focus for videos like this. It's so much better than the Canon. Well, a question to be answered. Anyway, what do you think of this photo comparison? Which photos do you like better? The Canons or the Sonys? Do you actually see a big difference between the shots? Please let me know in the comments below as I would love to hear your opinion about this. This video helped you somehow please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to my channel as you will help me a lot to keep creating content like this one. I hope you liked this video, I hope it helped you to see the differences between the images from one camera and the other and 
that's all for today guys thank you so much for watching me and i will see you in the next video ciao